Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be talking about the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ judgment. Okay. Now, many of you have heard this teaching before and the teaching goes something like this. Well, there are two different judgments. You got the great white throne and then you've got the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. So those who are not saved, those who are of the world, those who do not know the Lord, they're going to die and eventually they're going to end up at the great white throne. Okay. And, uh, and at the great white throne, they're going to meet God and God is going to be there in his wrath and in his fury. And he's going to judge them for the sinners that they are. Whereas if you're a Christian, as some would define the term Christian as someone who accepts Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you won't see the great white throne judgment. You're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you will be with Jesus. And Jesus is not going to condemn anybody there. All he's going to be doing is just rewarding you for your good works that you did. If you didn't do any good works, you're not going to get rewarded for anything, but you're still going to be saved. You see, this is how the teaching goes. If you've done a lot of good works, you know, you fed the poor, you did, you know, all this kind of stuff, you've helped the needy. Well, Jesus is going to reward you with a few extra stars in your crown. Okay, so that's how the teaching goes, where if you're not saved, you're going to face the great white throne. Whereas if you're saved, you're going to, you're going to face the judgment seat of Christ. Now, this whole teaching is taken out of a few different verses in the New Testament. There are a few verses where Paul talks about the judgment seat of Christ. And then there are those passages of scripture that John, when he wrote the book of Revelation, talks about the great white throne. Now, you need to ask yourself a question. Every evangelical preacher today that preaches about the great white throne and the judgment seat of Christ, they always talk about both of them and they differentiate between both of them. They say, you know, the judgment seat of Christ is for these kind of people and the great white throne is for these kind of people. So they always talk about both so-called judgments. But if you really look at the scriptures, Paul only writes about the judgment seat of Christ. He never writes about the great white throne. And some of you might say, well, yeah, that's because he's only writing to the churches. But he talks a lot about hell. He talks about not inheriting the kingdom of God. He warns a lot of people, if you do this, 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 or this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? So that is a very, very serious condemnation uh, from Paul. But he always talks about only the judgment seat of Christ, not the great white throne. Whereas John now, the one who wrote the book of Revelation, only talks about the great white throne and not the judgment seat of Christ. How can that be? Why is it that preachers today preach about the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne, usually within the same sermon, okay? And they usually differentiate between the two. So the question is, the whole teaching about the great white throne and the judgment seat of Christ that, that I just explained to you, is that really scriptural? I know that they take this stuff from scripture, but is it interpreted properly? Is it really looked at in the proper context? Again, the people who preach about the great white throne and the judgment seat of Christ today usually use those two terms in the same sermon, usually within a few sentences of each other. Why doesn't Paul do that? Why doesn't John do that? Is it possible that the preachers today preach their own doctrine that's out of context from the scripture? Let's look into this. Now the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I command you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 
So that seems to imply that Jesus, when he appears, when he comes, when he reveals himself as in the revelation of Jesus Christ, he will judge the living and the dead, that Jesus will be the judge, not just the rewarder of those who believe in him. Let's go on. John chapter 5. Verse 22 says, For the Father judges no one, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Hmm, so is it possible then that the great white throne that we're always taught, there's that God is there in the judgment seat of Christ. Well, Jesus is there. You know, God, basically God the Father is on the great white throne, and Jesus is at the judgment seat of Christ. Is it possible that the scriptures do not really say that much. They don't really specify that only God the Father is at the great white throne, whereas only Jesus is at the judgment seat of Christ. Is it possible that Jesus himself will be at both places? Or the Father will be at both places? Let's read a few more scriptures. Jude says in verse 14, about these also Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their works of ungodliness, which they have done in an ungodly way, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, obviously, here, Jude is prophesying that when Jesus comes back, he is going to execute some fierce judgments. Let's go on. Acts chapter 17, verse 30, Paul says, The times of ignorance therefore God overlooked. But now he, speaking of God, commands that all people everywhere should repent. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, of which he has given assurance to all men in that he has raised him from the dead. So we see clearer and clearer and clearer that all men will be judged by Jesus. Now, we can take this a step further, and we can point out scriptures in the Gospels where Jesus said, for example, to his disciples, you're the 12 disciples, I'm going to put you on 12 thrones, and I'm going to delegate you to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul said that we who are true Christians, that is, we will be given the job by the Lord himself, to judge the world. <laughs> we will judge the world. Yes, that's what the scripture says. We will judge the world. And it even takes it a step further than that by saying that we will not only judge the world, but we will judge angels. However, you know, you can take it up the hierarchy tree, so to speak, and go right up to God and say, God judges. Yes, he does. But how does he judge? He gives his judgment to Jesus. And you can say, well, Jesus is the one that's going to judge then. Well, yes, he does. But how does he do the judging? Well, he delegates judgment to other people. Okay. Let's go on and read a little bit more, okay? Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul said here in verse 3, We are bound to always give thanks to God for you, brothers, even as it is appropriate, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of each and every one of you toward one another abounds, so that we ourselves boast about you in the assemblies of God, that is like the churches, for your perseverance and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions which you endure. In other words, these people have endured affliction, okay? Persecution. And the scripture says, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So don't think it's just always going to be just, you know, a walk in the park, so to speak, and everybody's just going to love you just, you know, uh, to no end. No, remember, you know, remember what Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 7. He said, the world hates me. The world hates me, okay? He said, because I testify that its deeds are evil. I, I submit to you that if you testify that the world is evil and that its deeds are evil, as Jesus did, the world's going to hate you too. 
Verse 5, this is an obvious sign of the righteous judgment of God to the end that you may be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you also suffer. This is a very interesting point here that Paul brings out because he says that they are suffering because of their faith, because of their preaching, because of their stand on righteousness. They're suffering persecution so that they would be counted worthy of God's kingdom. Hmm. A lot of people today would say, all you got to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you'll be worthy of God's kingdom. That is not what Paul says here. Paul says a little bit more than that. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay affliction to those who afflict you and to give relief to you who are afflicted with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, loving those who don't know God, <coughs> excuse me, punishing those who don't know God, and to those who don't obey the good news of our Lord Jesus, who will pay the penalty, eternal destruction from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. Well, 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 we're seeing a little bit clearer more and more how Jesus is actually going to be the judge, okay? And before I wrap this up with the most important point of all, Okay, you all need to hear this now. Before I get to the most important point, the bottom line, let's read what Jesus himself said about how he is going to judge on that day. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 33 says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. Throne, there we go, the throne. Before him, all the nations will be gathered. That's the whole world. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And going down to verse 41, Jesus continues to tell us what he's going to do with all those who just hasn't quite made it. Then he will say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, which is prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in, naked and you didn't clothe me, sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. This is the judgment seat of Christ. This is the judgment seat of Christ. And may I submit to you that the judgment seat of Christ is the great white throne. We got two different people who call it two different things. John calls it the great white throne. Paul calls it the judgment seat of Christ. That's why we don't see John calling it the judgment seat of Christ because that's not his way of referring to it. He calls it the great white throne in the book of Revelation. And that's why Paul never uses the term great white throne because that's just not, he just doesn't call it the great white throne. He calls it the judgment seat of Christ. Now it's like this. Let's take chickens for example. You know, some people might call a male chicken a male chicken. Some people might call it a rooster. Some people might call it a roo. Some people might call it a cockerel. You go to the store nowadays, at least from where I am, they don't call it roosters. They call them cockerels, okay? You go there to buy a cockerel or many cockerels. And likewise, usually in a, in a more loose, casual setting, you don't hear people calling them cockerels. You hear them calling them roosters, okay? So Johnny might call it a cockerel, whereas Paul might call it a rooster. Just because it's two completely different words doesn't mean they're completely different things. Just two ways of referring to the same thing by two different people. This is exactly the way it goes with the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne, okay? They're both the same thing. There's not two different judgment days. 
not, okay? It's all the same. So once again, thanks for watching, and I hope this has been a blessing to you. May God give you great revelation and show you great and mighty things as you call upon his name and seek his face. Thanks again.